Um, once again, welcome to the Global agri -Food Tech Preneur Program Strategy Planning and Risk Management. This is a six week interactive course on entrepreneurship, tech, and sustainability in the food system. And also, this is part of the Global agri -Food Tech Preneur Program. Why are we um, looking into um, strategic planning and risk management? and also um, talking about the food system. We will always go through this in every session because what we're trying to do, everything we're doing is revolving around these challenges we have in the food system. One in five days is, is quite linked to malnutrition. That could be in the form of lack of access to food or it could be in the form of having access to the wrong um, diet whereby you have a lot of issues with obesity with over 1.9 billion people being obese. Over 900 million people are hungry, we waste over 1.3 billion tons of food, and 30% of Earth is currently um, degraded. So we need to really um, rethink the way we grow food, um, the way we distribute food, and the way we consume food for the future. And this is what we are um, working on addressing through this uh, Global Agri-Food Tech Premier Program. That will help you know, young people who can lead this um, food system transformation. So looking at strategic uh, planning, these are the things that we have already gone through uh, on the RBS, RBS Business Builder platform. We looked at operational planning, which um, has to do with what are the day-to-day -day act um, activities you need to do to be able to meet your strategic plan. So this is more like going around this particular um, uh, um, icons or, or boxes to come to the final stage of strategic planning. So you need to have operational plan, tactical plan, and continuously plan in place for you to be able to deliver your strategic plan. Now your tactical plan outlines the steps and actions that must be taken to achieve the goals from the strategic plan. So operational plan helps you with the day-to-day -day activities. Tactical plans help you to have a, a specific um, milestone you want to achieve or a specific um, timeline you want to see each um, milestone being delivered. And you need to be very tactical about it to make sure that it impacts on, on, on delivery. And also you have the contingency planning, which is more like aligning yourself with the risk. So if things didn't go well, you know, you need to first of all know where your risk lie for you to have a contingency plan. We'll talk more about risks in the next few slides. So if you understand, if you understand your risk, then you can have contingent plan in place to address those risks as it arises. So your strategic plan is more like your overall business plan. It's 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 quite encompassing. It covers your vision, your mission as an organization, what you want to achieve. But then it's all about having this operational, tactical, and contingency plan in place to help you to deliver on your strategic plan. So your strategic plan should have a clear detail of what the business is looking to achieve. So you need to have a detailed breakdown of your understanding of your customer segments, your customers, your value creation, what value proposition are you bringing to the market? What costs do you need to be able to achieve what you want to achieve? How, what is your route to market? How do you get to your market, to the users of your solutions? And also you need to think about, um, you know, sus sustenance of your business, economic resilience of your business. How do you ensure um, economic resilience of your business? All of this in key information need to fit into your strategic plan. It covers, you know, the basic thing that your, your business needs to think about. And once you have the strategic plan in place, then that's when you can go into the operational plan, the tactical plan and the contingent plan, because what, for you to have an operational plan, which is the day to day activities of what you need to do, you need to know exactly what you need to be doing. And then the tactical plan is the milestones you need to achieve. What milestones, where do you need to get to at every point in time to actually uh, evaluate and then say, okay, yes, we are moving up as we plan. And then contingency planning helps you to mitigate the risk that you have so that if things go wrong, then you know you can, you know, bounce back again and keep going because you have something contingent um, because you understand where the risks lie. So it's really important to have um, this understanding of your strategic plan and be able to establish your operational plan, your tactical plan and your contingency plan. 
like the saying goes, if we fail to plan, we we'll plan to fail. So it's really important to take time, you know, to plan or else we'll just be working so hard, you know, and then we're not really um, hitting the milestones because we don't even have a milestone in the first place to hit. And then we just stretching ourselves and spread, you know, spreading ourselves, but we're not really achieving specific milestones. So we need to have a clear plan. We have to have an operation, uh, a strategy, an overarching strategic plan. Um, strategic plan will have like long term strategic plan and short term strategic plan. So your long term strategic plan is the bigger vision of the company of your business, where you want to be. And then your short-term strategic plan is what exactly can you do in the next two to three years? So short-term uh, short strategic plan is looking at two to three years. Long-term strategic plan is looking at 10 years and above. You know, in the next 10 years, where do you want to see the business? But you have to walk down again to your strat to your um, short-term plan to know what you can do today. And from that short-term plan, you can start having your operational plan of what are the day-to-day -day activities that will help me to achieve this. Then you need to have your tactical plan, which is how do you get to specific milestones? Because those milestones will mean that, yes, you have been able to attain um, a specific deliverable. And then with that, understanding of your strategic plan will help you to know where there are issues where there could be risk and then you have the contingency plan in place to mitigate those risks now when you have your plan the next thing is to work back in your plan so for you to be able to set up your operational plan and also uh, your tactical plan you need to work back um, from your you know strategic plan which is the bigger vision of the company to be able to set up this operational plan so you need to set the time frame you need to have baseline um, current state so you need to know where you are um, and then define which are uh, possible states so when you have to know that you can then walk back and identify what are the key milestones you need to achieve and then then can you identify risks and opportunities and this is where you can then set up your uh, contingent plan. So it's really important to do this back casting um, because if you don't do that, then you will really know what the challenges you may be facing uh, in your business. So back casting is very important. It really helps you to, it allows you that flexibility to have this big vision, but also that um, accountability to work back and see how you can move on to achieve that big vision. So it might be big vision might be that you want to be the good market for you know organic baby food in the future. So how do you go about doing that? You have to work out where you are. So for you to do that, you have to work out okay, where am I now? What am I actually doing? If you're doing nothing, they need to start from somewhere. Okay, this month I want to be able to set up you know, either this farm or build this cooperative and get these other farmers in to supply this produce. Next month, I want to have a processing plant where I can start processing the upper month. So you need to then walk back from that big vision to say, what are the practical things I need to do now to be able to get that uh, big vision? So that's very important. So scenario setting, you need to set up different scenarios, um, you know, because you, you have to have your best, uh, best best case and you know you know worst case and maybe uh, an average case. So with that, it helps you to say, okay, this is the best case, best scenario or best case where I want to be at within this next three years to five years. This is average. This is an okay state, and this is just you know the worst case scenario. Once you have these cases, it will help you, to, it will keep you, uh, your mind at a lot to know where exactly do you fit in. And where, with that, you can actually move the nuggets and see where you need to improve uh, things. So do explore different scenarios, do um, work on optimizing and improving the scenarios as you as you measure your, your, your progress uh, and then your, your progress terms of actual delivery and the forecasted delivery. But if you don't have these scenarios in place, it might be a bit shocking for you uh, when you do your assessment to uh, realize that as many of the things you have set in place, um, you're not able to achieve it. And then it becomes very difficult for you to adjust. But if you set these scenarios, it's easier for you to go like, boom, I know what's going on here. You know, this is where the gap is. If I can close this gap, this is where we can find ourselves in the next one month or two months because you've already built like scenarios. Um, you have an idea of what um, you to expect. 
so for you to be able to uh, view scenarios, you need to set up smart goals. Um, those uh, goals need to be very specific, uh, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So specific means that you have to have clarity. So there's no ambiguity in setting your goals. And every member of your organization needs to know how the activities are contributing to achieving those goals that you've set. So that's why it has to be very specific. And when you know activities are being assigned to people working with you, they should know how that activity links up to um, the specific goals. It should be measurable. It should be something that you can say, okay, yeah, um, we want to make sure that um, we produce 1,000 or 1 ton of uh, potato or one ton of um, carrots in the next two months. So it should be clearly measurable so that by the next two months, you can say to yourself, yes, we, are, we actually produce one ton of uh, carrot. Or we want to use this less fertilizer. So we want to use less, um, say, 10, less of 10 kilogram of fertilizer. We want to use 50 kilogram of um, compost going forward so it's very measurable you know that by the time you get to those two months you're measuring yourself to say okay i've kept record of this and that comes to accountability record keeping because for you to make it measurable you need to be able to define the metrics for which you have to measure it so how do you measure um these um key variables so that you have the key uh, performance indicators that you set for yourself which has been stated in the specific goal that you set so Having a specific goal, making sure that you can measure those specific goals is very important because if you, what you cannot, you cannot change what you cannot measure. So it's only when you measure something, you know how you can go about changing it. Your goal should be attainable. You know, you know, <laughs> well, this is something that uh, can be argued depending on you know the mindset. So if you have a which we're going to talk about in the future, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. A growth mindset is able to adapt. Um, and with a growth mindset, you can challenge yourself more. So, the, 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 you know, I mean, based on some uh, research, it shows that if you're always achieving your goal, that means you're not setting enough target for enough ambition, you're not being ambitious enough. So you need to be very ambitious in such a way that most of the time you don't meet up to 70% um, of your target, you're only meeting 30%. And these are very um, ambitious goals. So uh, it's not about you setting something very minimal for you and expect yourself to achieve just... Um, 30% of it. It's a very ambitious goal for yourself. And then um, you work hard to make sure you achieve it. But in most cases, if it's ambitious enough, you're not meant to exceed more than 30% of that. So that means you have more things to do, something challenging you more to do um, a lot more. So I, I set up attainable goals, but make sure they're very ambitious so they can continue to challenge you, continue to help you be the best of who you are. Make it relevant for your sec for what you're doing. Um, we are, in this case, you have to make sure that the goals you set yourself is enabling you to achieve the goal, that specific goal. If it's not enabling you to achieve the specific goal, then it's not very helpful. So it's not helping you to achieve your strategy uh, which you've set in place. So make sure it's relevant and make sure it's time bound. So it's not going to be endless, it has to be achieved at a certain point. So it has to be achieved at a certain point and everyone who's working with you, who is working in organization, your suppliers, your investors, they need to know the timeline that you have. They need to know that you are time bound, that these things have to be delivered as at when it has to be delivered. If not, it's going to affect the next tax in the strategic plan. So when you talk about strategic plan, you normally have what we call the critical pathway. So the critical pathway is that pathway that if you don't follow, well, that the critical pathway would get you earliest to your um, delivery of your goal. But if it's any single uh, change in the time for any of the tags, it simply means that that um, goal cannot be delivered. So the critical pathway is very important that you define your click critical pathway as you set up your strategic plan. This will help you to keep everyone informed and everyone engaged in the strategic plan that you've set up. So specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound, very important. So what's a risk register? You need to first of all identify your risk um, and then be a risk register. Very important. Um, it's something that you cannot help. Um, that's the only way you can have your contingent plan in place. If you don't have a risk register, you will struggle to have understand the risk your business is facing and how you can mitigate this risk. Um, 
So you have to identify the risk for each goal and keep a risk register that will help you to develop your contingent plan. For you to move, so part of what we're talking about here um, with strategy planning is also partnerships. Um, and these are things kind of covered in your in the RB, RBS um, business with that platform for this particular topic. So you need to carry out a SWOT analysis to identify opportunities to partner, reach out to potential partners, set up the right agreement, and enjoy working together with your partners. So the case study we're doing for this particular topic is Kerry Group, Inspiring Food, Nourishing Life. Um, the link is here. We're going to be sharing that with you. And we hope you do take time to read that. Look at these reflection questions and see how that is, um, yeah, you can identify this, these uh, reflection questions in the case study. When we plan, we save food, we save our health, we save environment, and we save wealth. So we really need to act quite quickly um, to be able to deliver a sustainable food system. Well, I think we've gone through um, the topic for today. Do you have any question at this point? Hello, everyone. Um, welcome again to another um, session to look into the interactive section on food system sustainability, uh, on entrepreneurship tech and sustainability in the food system. You're very much welcome today and um, it's a pleasure to be able to uh, have also a very meaningful discussion um today and our topic for today will be centered on strategic planning and risk management so but we we are aware that last week we are supposed to look into uh the case study for um, the topic on food system uh, sustainability we did um discuss that we have to move that over to this week and we'll have to do that quite quickly at the start of this particular uh session so what we're going to do uh in addition to reviewing the food industry sustainability index quite quickly also is to um also review the um the case study which we had. So I'm hoping that now that we have additional time to be able to work on it, that uh, we've taken some time to be able to go through that. I, I, I mentioned, we mentioned in the email we sent out and also a message on WhatsApp that um, the food industry in the sustainable index has been set out and basically to work with farmers and that anyone who is not, you know, set up their business to work directly in the farm can adapt that to use um, in their own business. Most of the questions there are standard questions that will apply to any business anyway. I know that some specific questions are very much formulated and those questions can actually be um, deleted from the, the that, that, that particular spreadsheet just to allow you to participate in in that and is there, if there's any way that particular question can be adapted so it's, you know you know what your business is doing if there's any way that particular question can be adapted specifically for your business you're also encouraged to explore that and see how that can be adapted and what we want to do is to be able to take that back um, if you have any specific area you felt um, you did not really or you, you, you've adapted, but you don't really know whether that works for what you're doing. We're happy to have a chat on that in this particular session. Um, so I, I really appreciate that. And I think that's more a wider application in terms of, you know, the, the overall structure of the program. I know that internet could be quite a pain and a challenge with regards to engaging with um, the, the program. And I really appreciate all the effort everyone is making, even within a very tight budget and a tight you know, time you have with your business to be able to engage and participate in this. Um, I believe that the learning you're going to get from it will continue to improve what you're doing and will pay off for all the resources that you're putting in um, for, 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 for engaging with the program. With regards to the RBS Business Builder Platform, what that is meant to do is really um, extend your knowledge beyond you know what you used to know um, in terms of building a business so um, as much as you know it's not put together in one place for you what that's meant to do is also help you to see you know how 
things done differently in in different parts of the world because uh, you know it takes you away from your comfort zone of you know this material is set up for me like this i just need to use it but also trying to figure out how to get your head around resources that you don't have control over it's not going to work for everybody but i'm hoping that somehow you're able to make um make that useful it's a challenge we we'll love to continue to expose participants to and we will also try our best to guide them better in the future to manage that. Um, but I really appreciate your feedback. One important thing I want to say with the FISI is that that's a very important tool for you if you want to explore sustainable finances, which I believe that everyone here is looking to assess some form of funding or other in the future. That you, you have great potential in terms of working in the food sector to assess sustainable finances for what you're doing. And what we want to do is also support you in the journey um, working with local development banks to be able to um, provide access to sustainable finance. But you need to understand what exactly sustainable finance or what sustainability in the food system means for you to demonstrate that you are working towards achieving sustainable, uh, assessing sustainable finance. Because if you don't understand the things that is expected of you, then even when you're there for sustainable finance, you are struggling with establishing that you are a right candidate for sustainable financing. So that, that we have, we do have, based on all the climate change issues and food insecurity issues we have globally, we have a lot of sustainable finances that you as an agri-foodpreneur can assess, but you need to be able to demonstrate that you understand exactly what sustainability means for your business, identify your key, um, your key performance indicators, because it's from what you've done now, you can then look at what are your key performance indicators, what are your um, key messages, and then be able to look at how you want to go about assessing sustainable finance, because sustainable finances are focused on key performance indicators. I'm hoping that we'll go into this in more detail and the session on funding and finance, and hopefully we may be able to bring an expert to come in and also um, talk to us on that. So that is it. That's a wrap up for the FISI. We'll get the document in place. You put your questions there. We'll answer for your questions. But I really want you to appreciate the importance of understanding what sustainability is in food system and how understand that understanding can help you unlock many opportunities in your business, whether in terms of communicating with other stakeholders, assessing finances, or even you know building partnerships and also. Hello, welcome back, everyone. Um, quite interesting conversation there. As the, you know, you rejoined the room, and um, I'm I, I'm made to understand that some of us do not have access to the case study. Um, we did share that um, in the slide, so I will try to share the slide again. Excuse me. Just to show you where it was in the slide. Um, so this is a slide we shared with you for the last session of food system sustainability. And um, this was a case study link. And these were the reflection questions. I've, as I went through the rooms, I tried to put a link and also the reflection questions in the rooms, some of the rooms, and I'm hoping that you were able to pick them up from there. But like I'm saying, this this, this information we already put in the uh, document we shared with you um, following the last session, which was two weeks ago. So at the point of the last meeting, last session we had, which we, you know, we had to move on the topic to this session. I was hoping we've already covered this and we are ready to discuss that. So we actually had two weeks um, extra time to have gone through um, this document and um, have a very uh, impactful discussion um, during the session. So uh, well, thank you very much, Ifolo. Um, I'm conscious of the fact that we have less than 40 minutes to discuss the topic of our today. Um, I'm also keen for everyone to benefit from the case study. So we're not going to go into the details of uh, the case studies from our own end in you know, IntelliDigest today to give other people more time to look at it. 
you will assign some time in the next session to look at. So we will now have two case studies to look at next week. So we're looking at the case study for this week, or for the last week, which is the one we're discussing now, and the case study for this week, um, for this week uh, topic, which is on strategy and strategic planning and risk management. So um, I would encourage us to make our time to review these case studies, look at the um, uh, 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 questions for um, review, and be very much prepared to discuss these case studies in the next session. I want to see more engagement. So we also need, we're also going to have two sessions next week, one on the uh, last week case study, one on this week case study, so that more people can understand and benefit from the case study because that is the purpose of these sessions to make it very practical for you. One thing is talking about the theory, the other thing is taking that theory and translating it into real world cases, real world issues, because there's no point, you know, pushing you know, theories to you in these sessions without you really knowing how that. Um, uh, it's a, how you can apply that in you know real um, real world you know which, where your businesses uh, do exist. So I will leave us to for those of us who have not read it, take time to read it, uh, reference questions, take time to answer them, be very prepared for a very meaningful conversation in the next section. So with that, I'll bring this particular um, case study and breakout room sessions to an end today. And I will go into sharing my slides for the topic we'll have today, which is on strategic um, planning and risk management. We'll go through that in the next um, 20 minutes, well, 15 minutes, take some questions for five minutes, and that'll bring us to the end of the session today. And we will share the slides with you, the link to the case studies with you, and hopefully you will work on it and we will meet again next week. Tomorrow.